Savage here tonight. Let me tell you something. Don't ever sleep on Dan Henderson. People think just because he's 38 years old, he's done. So, Austin, amazing stuff there. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Dan Henderson's patented H-bomb. So many highlight knockouts there. All right, so what's going on in the highlights in MMA right now? Uh, well, currently the biggest news story in MMA is Ronda Rousey uh, was just on Ellen DeGeneres' show. And she had discussed her suicidal thoughts after the uh, tremendous upset loss to Holly Holm. Oh, yeah, that was a devastating blow. More yes. ways than one, no pun intended. Yeah, she was a, a high favorite in that fight. And it just really shows you the stress levels that go into a championship fight like that. Uh, to, to have everything and then to lose in such a brutal fashion, I, I can't even begin yeah. to think what went through her mind. That's a tough part. Psychologically, does she ever prepare herself for a loss, which I guess a lot of fighters don't want to do. They don't even want to think of the idea of themselves losing. But it doesn't just live in the ring, right? Once you lose, you're going to hear about it day after day. And if you're married or have children, they're going to, they're going to hear about it. Your friends are going to hear about it. And then right. you're going to get the inevitable thing of, oh, I'm so sorry, which most people don't want to hear sometimes. Yeah, and the, uh, a big argument as well is now, you know, anytime someone undefeated loses, now they're exposed. So, you know, personally, I think an undefeated fighter needs to lose at some point in their career because uh, if they, it, it helps them become a better fighter. Uh, if they continue to win, they don't change anything. They become too stagnant. They get ego-centered, and they just continue on that path. But it, Trump thinks it's you always have to win. <laughs> well, maybe that's a whole nother story. That is a whole nother right. story. You know, we, we need to ask Dan that. We're going to be calling him in a minute or two here. We'll be talking to him and finding out what he thinks about that. Is about Dan, Trump? No, losing. Oh, <laughs> losing. I wonder if he wants to give Trump an H-bomb or not. <laughs> that would be a fascinating I'm sure video. a lot of us do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. That's another fight in another octagon for another day. Um so Dan Henderson's coming up right now in about one minute or two minutes. You have a lot of questions you want to ask him. Oh, one yeah. Two questions of the Conor McGregor one you mentioned earlier. And you want to ask him something about his upcoming fight? Yes, he's having a, a much-anticipated rematch with Leo DiMachita. So I'm interested to hear his yeah. thoughts about that as well. Who is Leo DiMachita? Leo DiMachita is a karate-based uh, Japanese and Brazilian fighter. Uh, he's the oh. former uh, lightweight uh, light heavyweight champion, and uh, currently in middleweight as well. And what kind of style does he have? Is it karate? Karate. Oh, karate. He's a karate oh, fighter. You mentioned that in the beginning. A little too many blows. Very, to very elusive style as well, so it'll interesting. be an interesting fight. And before we go to that, the road to recovery starts here, everybody. Where is here? Elite Care. You can find them at EliteCareTreatment.com. Thank you to our sponsor, Elite Care, for helping us out and providing the, the funds for this great show. Very lucky to have them. Absolutely. We thank you, and I'm sure our guests as well, and everybody else out there. Well, and the moment you've been waiting for is here now with me, former Pride champion and UFC contender and all-time legend Dan Henderson. He's also the owner of Dan Henderson's Athletic Fitness Center, a place you want to go visit. Welcome, Dan. How's it going, guys? Very good. How are you? Absolutely wonderful. Good, good. Excellent. Excellent. Good job. Hey, Dan, uh, well, let's see and find out. Thank you so much for doing the interview with us. Can you tell us a little bit oh, how you question. got started in the world of UFC and fighting? Uh, you know, I just grew up as a wrestler and saw it on TV, thought I'd be pretty good at it, and uh, gave it a <laughs> try. So, you know, I wanted to kind of make a little money to, to keep wrestling and, and uh, pursue my Olympic career a little more and uh you know that's kind of how it all started now that must have been a big change between the olympics and mma uh you know it wasn't too bad i mean it was wrestling wrestling is kind of a tough sport so it wasn't too big of a difference obviously there's a lot more that uh can happen in mixed martial arts Sure. Did you like the idea of being open, being able to open your fists and punch and be able to do arm, uh, not arm, arm wars, I guess you could do in wrestling, but able to do more things in MMA than you did in wrestling? Yeah, it was, it was uh, a little more exciting than, you know, I had been wrestling for so long and, and 
wasn't learning that many new things that often, and uh, you know, mixed martial arts was was all new and exciting to me. So it was uh, pretty fun to learn all the new techniques that I can do. That's fabulous, Austin. What you got for him, Dan? I have a uh, two-part question for you. Um, you're famously uh, the only. Uh, uh, fighter in a major promotion to hold multiple uh, titles and multiple weight classes at the same time. Uh, what was that like for you? And uh, in anticipation of Conor McGregor versus Rafael Dos Anjos uh, coming up March 5th, uh, do you think uh, Conor McGregor can hold multiple titles? And what advice would you have for him if he uh, uh, accomplishes that? Yeah, I don't know if I got any advice for him. I mean, other than, you know, kind of be a little more humble, but he likes to open his <laughs> mouth. And he's, he's uh, you know, he's, he's talented. He's good at what he does. Uh, I don't think he's been tested uh, thoroughly yet in, in all aspects of MMA, but, you know, his stand-up is uh, definitely some of the best out there in MMA. So, I mean, he, he definitely has a chance um, to beat Dos Anjos, you know. Is anybody for me, thoroughly... it, was, uh, it was such a long time ago that I did that, and, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was it was a fun experience. I I didn't really think too much of it at the time. I was just fighting and trying to win, and didn't matter what weight class it was at. <laughs> you're you're a true legend in the sport, Dan. <laughs> Nobody's really thoroughly tested, Dan, right, till they fight you. <laughs> I don't know about that, but, uh, you know, do I, yeah, I would like to have seen, seen him fight uh, Frankie Edgar before he got, uh, went up a weight class, but, uh, yeah, I agree. you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So tell us about your upcoming rematch with Leota Machida. Uh, are you excited for this fight, and how do you see yourself winning? Uh, you know, it's 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 a fight that I felt like uh, the first time I fought him that that I won, but didn't get the judge's decision. So, you know, I'm definitely going to be much more aggressive and, and go after him a little bit and try not to leave it in the judge's hands this time. So. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. He's he's very talented, very tough, and, and elusive, hard to hit, mm -hmm. and quick. So he's he definitely has his uh, strengths. So I you know I just need to make sure that uh, I'm fighting my fight. What are the of all the fighters you fight? Boy, you have an amazing list there of fighters that you've tangled with: Vitor Belfort, Anderson Silva, and a whole lot of others. Anybody? Any of those fights really stand out for you, or one that you thought? Really, you felt really proud about winning. Uh, you know, Vanderlei obviously is uh, you know the tough one. When I had won that second belt was against him, and and you know beating Fedor was another big one. Oh, so yeah, that's definitely. Great there's a number of them in there that you know bring back good memories. <laughs> And have you noticed, you've been fighting for how long now in the MMA? Uh, I don't know, a long time, probably close to 19 years. 19 years. It's incredible. God. And Do you feel different now? Do you feel like you're a lot, obviously, smarter, wiser? You can catch moves a lot faster? It becomes more of a habit now compared to maybe 15, 12 years ago? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely, you know, the experience definitely comes through in, in, in what I do and I'm much more efficient with what I do, um, a lot smarter with it, but you know, I'm feeling a little bit old, older than I was 15 years ago, though, for sure. <laughs> uh, you're still hanging in there with the young ones. <laughs> we got a couple Sorry, more. <laughs> we have a couple more minutes left. Thank you so much again for doing this, everybody. It's Dan Henderson. You can also visit him at Dan Henderson's Athletic Fitness Center, a place to go. I'm telling you right now. Uh, Dan, psychologically, this show we deal a lot with the mind. Uh, what is it like for you when you go in there 
to fight somebody that gets uh, maybe has the advantage according to the so-called so experts. Uh, what happens, you know, sometimes people get prepped up for a fight and the, the media or the ex so-called experts are saying, you know, Dan Henderson cannot beat this person, whatever, and they're putting you as the underdog. What do you say to yourself in those times? Uh, you know, I love being the underdog. You know, it, 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 there's a, there's no pressure to, at all. You're, if you're supposed to lose, then you got nothing to lose. So you go out there, and I, I prefer to be the underdog a lot of times, and, and go out and I love to prove people wrong. So um, it's you know, happened many it's times. It's a little bit more motivating, but I'm I'm pretty motivated whether I'm the underdog or not. <laughs> That's great. Now, what about your your favorite knockout? Uh, for me personally, it was your knockout of uh, Michael Bisping. That was uh, so, <laughs> so so much fun after watching that whole season of The Ultimate Fighter. But uh, with your patented H bomb, what was your favorite knockout? Uh, you know, that's probably one of the favorites for sure. <laughs> you know, um, I know that that's most people's favorite. Uh, you know, for me. It was pretty fun to do, uh, you know. But as far as a sense of accomplishment, you know, probably when I when I knocked out Vanderlei or Fedor was was two two knockouts that uh, mean the most to me, probably. Oh yeah, that Fedor fight was great. Absolutely. That was a great fight. Hey Dad, tell us a little bit about your athletic fitness center. What's going yeah. on there? What do you do? Oh yeah, we just it's uh, just a regular gym with. Well, obviously, we have mixed martial arts and wrestling and everything else, but a lot of fitness classes and, and cross training classes and, and uh, you know, spin and all sorts of different type of kettlebell classes and oh wow, some pretty neat stuff. So it, it's a it's a full fitness center, not just uh, not just a mixed martial arts gym. So that sounds you know, great. Total body 16, workout. That's great. Yeah, it's about sixteen thousand square feet, so it's good wow. size. Oh, huge. Wow, that is huge. Woo. Sixteen thousand square feet. The Dan Henderson Athletic Fitness Center. Dan, uh, last question. We I always like to ask the athletes this question. Um, what advice would you give to young fighters out there? Uh, you know, just enjoy what you do and and get into a good gym that uh, that you can learn from, learn at, and and you know, kind of. Uh, not be overlooked and make sure that you're, you know, you're just learning all the new techniques uh, along the way and not just uh, sparring hard. You kind of get burned out quick when you do that. That's good right. advice. I like that. And Austin, we got to find out what he's up to now. Yeah, uh, besides your upcoming fight, uh, where are you at now and uh, where can your fans find you for more information? Uh, you know, I'm just, I live in Temecula and, and uh, you know, that's where my gym is and, and just been, uh, you know, started training camp now. So, great. you know, it's, uh, it's what I'll be doing for the next couple of months. Do you even have a target date for retirement or you just retire when your body tells you? <laughs> uh, no date in mind yet, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's not too far off. <laughs> well, we hope not, unfortunately. This is self-interest on my part, but I hope to see you fight a whole lot more. Thank you so much again, Dan Henderson. Thank you, Dan. Oh, I appreciate it, guys. You guys have a good one. You too. You as well. Dan Henderson at the right. Dan Henderson Athletic Fitness Center, a place to go in Temecula. You don't want to miss it.